Good afternoon, everyone. Just wanted to thank our sponsors once again. And thank you all for the chance to discuss some of my, researcher, my research and some of my collaborators' research. So I changed the title of our talk a little bit today. Um, it's the age of HLB infection and nutritional supplementation affect Asian citrus psyllid host plant selection. So we started this research with in mind that HLB pathogen spreads very quickly and that infected plants are in decline. So we were interested in what are the underlying HLB pathogen, citrus and psyllid interactions that mediate these, the spread of the pathogen. And one of the tools that we use is what we call a T-maze olfactometer. And that's this apparatus right here. Essentially, it's a glass tube that's divided down the center. And on either side of the divider, we can, just, we can present the psyllid with different odors. And we started out using infected citrus odor and healthy citrus odor to try to determine if the psyllid has a preference for one or the other. So we release the psyllid at the bottom of this tube, and then the psyllid can fly upwards toward the, towards the light and choose the left side or the right side. And by using enough psyllids, we can determine if the psyllids have a preference. And these were our initial results. We found that male and female psyllids both have a preference for infected citrus odor. And we also did this experiment using Liberobacter infected psyllids just to see if the infection of the psyllid changes their response to plant odors but it doesn't. They both go preferentially to HLB-infected citrus odor. However, this doesn't necessarily say that the psyllid chooses to go to these plants in the field. So we devised another experiment where we used two plants, one infected and one healthy. And we put them in a cage, and inside the cage we released psyllids. And then over the course of several days, we monitor where the psyllids are, whether they're on the control plant or if they're on the in infected plant. And what we find is quite interesting. In the first 48 hours, the psyllids indeed show a preference for the HLB infected citrus. However, after seven days, they seem to switch and they prefer the, con the healthy control citrus. We also did this experiment in complete dark conditions, just in case that there were some visual cues that the psyllids were using, like potentially the yellowing of the shoots. But it didn't affect the results, which suggests that it's the smell of the plants that are causing the psyllids to initially go to an HLB-infected plant and then subsequently move to a healthy plant. So just to really zero in on this, we did this experiment very similarly again, only this time we cage the psyllids on the first plant. So on the top line here, the status of the release plant is listed either as uninfected, uninfected, infected, or infected. And then we presented the psyllids with a second plant at 24 hours, which was either infected or uninfected. And we looked to see how many of the psyllids decided to leave the initial plant that they were forced to settle on and move to the second plant. And what we find is that only in the case where the initial plant that they were forced to settle on was infected, but then they were subsequently presented with an uninfected plant, did they choose to move from the infected plant to the uninfected plant? In the other cases, very few of them moved from one plant to the other, somewhere between 5 to 10 percent. So it shows that there's some, something is causing the psyllids to initially settle on an HLB-infected plant, and then after a certain amount of time, they want to leave and find another plant, preferably uninfected. So we've shown so far that we're pretty sure that there's an odor cue that's causing these psyllids to choose these infected plants over uninfected plants. And we have some tools in our lab that we use to really look at what the plants smell like. And so here I'm showing, this is, uh, we call it our air handler. And it's basically this piece of equipment that can um, fine tune how much air that we're pumping into a bell jar like this that has a plant in it. And it also pulls out a certain amount of air. And we can sample what the air smells like. And this is an example of the kind of results we get. What we have here is a, a gas chromatogram showing the different types of odor components that are coming off uninfected on the top and L, uh, HLB infected on the bottom. And what we see is that both plants have limonene and osamine, which are very common citrus odors. However, uninfected plants have this compound methyl anthranolate, 
whereas infected plants have methyl salicylate. And for those of you who are interested, methyl salicylate is the smell of wintergreen. I'm not saying that a plant smells like wintergreen, but just that in high enough concentrations, humans can detect it and we think it's wintergreen. These plants also have deficiencies, which we've heard about before, nitrogen, iron, zinc, phosphorus, and they have excess boron and potassium. So again, we went back to our teammates olfactometer to try to decide what odor components, individual components from the citrus, actually are important in the psyllids choosing the HLB-infected plant over the healthy plants. And here's what we find. We chose these three compounds to look at, and at several different dosages, so really small quantities and really large quantities, because sometimes behavior changes between low quantities and high quantities. And then these two columns reflect the number of psyllids choosing the odor compound or choosing a clean air control, so no odor. And what we find is that all the ones in green here the psyllids are attracted to, which includes the lowest dose of this methyl salicylate, which is the compound that we find in HLB-infected citrus. And then at high concentrations of methyl salicylate, the psyllids are no longer attracted. They're actually repelled. But this still doesn't answer the question, why do the psyllids like to go after a certain amount of time they move from the HLB-infected plants to healthy control plants? And so we did a feeding bioassay. And in our lab, we use a um, number of honeydew droplets, so the excrement from the psyllids, and we measure how much they excrete. And here we can see that these green bars are the number of excrement from healthy plants, or psyllids fed on healthy plants, compared to the number of droplets from psyllids fed on HLB-infected plants. And over the course of time, they do feed more but they always feed more on uninfected citrus than they do on HLB-infected citrus, which suggests that the psyllids don't like to eat it. They like to eat healthy citrus. Either it doesn't taste good, or physiologically over the course of time, they feel bad after eating it. So we wanted to really tease apart this part of the question. So we did some more settling bioassays, similar to what we did before, only this time we chose several more treatments. We wanted to look at um, control plants, so how do psyllids settle between two equally attractive healthy plants, or a control plant and an older infected HLB plant. So we were looking at HLB, or citrus plants that were positive for HLB at least a year prior to doing this experiment. Another old infection versus an old infected plant, but with a nutrient supplementation, which we used um, in this case, Keplex. And then a control plant versus an older infection with nutrient supplementation. A control plant versus a newly infected HLB plant. And we define this one as anything that was positive for HLB less than five months. And then finally, an old HLB plant versus a new HLB plant. And this is what we got. So on the y-axis here, we have a ratio. The number of psyllids on one plant, the first plant listed in this column, versus the number of psyllids that are settled on the other plant, so the second column. And I'm just going to pull out a few things here. This top one here is the number of psyllids on a newly infected HLB plant compared to an old infected HLB plant. And what's really striking is that they really like the newly infected HLB plants, but not the older infected HLB plants. And then down at the bottom here, this purple line, this is the number of psyllids that are settling on a healthy citrus plant compared to the number of psyllids settling on a new infected HLB plant. And again, we see the same trend where the psyllids really like this new HLB infected plant. And then the final part that I wanted to pull out are these two, this green line here and this blue line here. And the green line is uh, how many psyllids are on a control plant versus the number of psyllids that are on the old infected HLB plant that's been treated with nutrients. And with the blue line, it's the number of on control plants versus the old infected untreated plants. And what we find is that they both have this negative trend that over time, more of the psyllids are moving from the control plants onto these old infected HLB plants. 
and the ones that have the nutrient, supp nutrient supplementation appear that they have maybe a few more psyllids going to them. So some of the conclusions that we've drawn from this series of experiments have been that HLB-infected plants release a specific volatile, a specific smell that the psyllids are using to locate HLB-infected plants, and we believe that this smell is methyl salicylate. Initially, the Agent citrus psyllid prefers newly infected plants for settling, and then subsequently dispersed to non-infected plants, potentially because of suboptimal nutritional content of the infected plants. As the trees decline following infection, they seem to no longer be preferred by the agent citrus psyllid. And the newly infected plants are still preferred over the old infected plants, which is probably one of the most important factors that we found. And then finally, Nutritional supplements um, provided to trees that are previously infected, the old infections, um, seems to increase their attractiveness to Asian citrus psyllid. And then plants with these old infections are not as attractive to Asian citrus psyllid than are the newly infected plants when compared to the uninfected healthy plants. And so I'd really like to acknowledge our funding from the Citrus Research and Development Foundation and the USDA to do this research. It's been a blessing to get this kind of funding. And then also, these are the members of the Stilins, well, this is an older version, but a lot of the members in the lab at this time were ones that were directly involved with doing this research, and without them, we wouldn't have been able to do what we've done. So with that, thank you very much for listening. <laughs>